Don't worry. And none of you are being reported. I don't know. Okay. So, what do you think? Can or cannot? Show of hands. Who says an object can, C-A-N, can exceed its terminal velocity? A raise of hands at the little hand button. You hit the button. It's easy for me to see. Some of you got the backgrounds and whatnot. You got one in the room. One, two, three, four, five, six. Say you can. Seven, eight. Two, four, six, eight. We got nine, ten, eleven. All right, we'll settle out there. So, eleven people say can. Those people who say can, provide an example, please. Let's get a couple of examples. You may want to write more than one example on your paper if they're true. Uh, DJ, you got an example? Um. Yeah, I mean, like vehicles. What do you mean? Like, like people going in like like Mach five and jets. Like you're exceeding human terminal velocity by being inside of an object, you can travel faster. Oh, that's an interesting scenario there. So by being inside another object, uh, terminal velocity is really a concept that makes sense only when you're allowed to consider air resistance. I mean, and another example could be like if you're falling and someone is falling right behind you and they push you while you're falling already. Because uh, if, say, both you are the same weight and okay. you both have, you, that would mean you both have the same terminal velocity. Okay. So you'd be right next to each other. Okay. Person A could then push person B like down. Oh. And that would increase their speed. Okay. If slightly, it would One increase it. Is a push an object already at terminal velocity. You don't have to write all these. Maybe write one. You know what? We'll make a list up here, and you can write, like, the top two that you like. I thought of that one. That's, so if you put now, will they automatically go faster if you push them? I mean, certain Newton's third law, it says that any, like, action has an opposite reaction so you pushing them if you pushed with that amount of force on them they would then go back with that amount of force all right so you're connecting to something that's related and unrelated part of what yeah. you said applies to this part of it applies to the other person who's going to slow down but I, I like the example i like the example it doesn't guarantee it's going to speed up but it seems reasonable that it would anybody have another one lou I was going to say the fighter jet one. What about it? Like he said, if you're going Mach 5, breaking the speed of sound in a fighter jet, you're way past your terminal velocity as a human. Okay, so here's the thing that I'm going to say back. This is I'm glad you guys brought this one up, but this is one that you have to think about carefully. Terminal velocity is the scenario we talked about yesterday. It's when what balances the force of gravity? Yes, air. air resistance. That's right. When you're inside a capsule like a plane, you are not being exposed to air resistance. The plane is, but you are not. So it doesn't really make sense to talk about your terminal velocity as being what the plane is doing at that moment because you're not actually exposed to the air resistance that the plane is. It might actually make sense to talk about whether the plane is over its own terminal velocity. That actually would be a question that fits this. Unfortunately, I don't know what the terminal velocity of a fighter plane is. If you were just to let it drop, see how fast. But there are other examples of this that you can think of. Anybody got another example? Ian? This one's a little out there, but I was thinking in terms of meteorites, because uh, if they're being pulled by the gravity of the Earth or any planet for that matter, then they're then they already have like a terminal velocity uh kind of due to its gravity that would be kind of the way they were traveling before but then when gravity starts to affect them and pull them closer they would start to kind of burn up in the atmosphere and start to kind of lose the surface area thanks to the heat and then that would force them to increase their speed okay part of the explanation goes a little aside however i like the example he said a shooting star. You guys know what a shooting star is? Shooting star is a, is a meteorite, like a piece of rock 
that's moving really fast in space. Now, Ian, there is no terminal velocity for that rock in space because there's no air resistance in space. So it's going whatever speed it's going, and there's no rule that says, wait a minute. I mean, there is once you get near the speed of light, but that's a separate issue. There's no rule there that says, wait a minute, you can't go any faster if we push you. There's air in the way because there's no air in the way. But a shooting star, once it comes into what a shooting star really is, this is just a nickname. This is a fast moving meteorite. This is a good one. I would write this one. From space that enters the atmosphere. And what happens to it? Well, what happens to that piece of rock that comes into our atmosphere at high speed? Well, we call it a shooting star because what does it look like? It burns up. It burns up, actually. What happens to its speed? Goes faster by burning up? Think about it. Think about something moving really fast and then going into the air. There's no air. Hits the air. So here, let me draw you a little picture. For everybody here, think about this. If you have, here's the earth. Let's put a big old earth over here. Perfect. Can I just explain? Go ahead. Okay. So in the there's no air, there's nothing in space. Space is a vacuum. So when the rock flies into the atmosphere, there's air. The rock creates friction with the air. Oxygen is flammable, catches on fire, starts burning up in the atmosphere, it gets smaller and smaller, which means it's speeding up, which means it's less more affected by air resistance. I like, until it really gets so small where it just disappears. I like everything you said except for one comment. Anybody know what the comment is? There's one comment he made that I don't like. He's less affected by air resistance. I'm going to draw some. Here's Earth. And above, this is a terrible drawing. Earth is much, Earth is huge. And I'm going to draw here the atmosphere. Where is there more air, near Earth or away from Earth? Near. Near Earth. So near Earth, you got a bunch of air, and then as you get farther away, the air becomes thinner and thinner until eventually there's really no air out here. And wherever you run out of air, this is kind of what we call space. So here comes this rock. This rock is hustling. Sometimes these rocks can be going 20,000 miles per hour sometimes more hustling that's why when people say space debris something hits you in space you better watch out so this thing's coming through about twenty thousand miles per hour right now there is no air so there is no terminal velocity gravity is pulling this thing this way the force of gravity is pulling this thing toward the earth but there is no air resistance fighting it so it's going, 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 and then boom, right now, what does it start to bump into? Once it gets down here, what does that rock start to bump into? Somebody call it out. Oxygen. Air. You all see that? It bumps into air. Here's the atmosphere. It bumps into air. Air, when you bump into air, does it speed you up or slow you down? Let me give you the fighter jet example. You're going at Mach 5 in the fighter jet. If he were to open the cockpit and stick his head out, what would happen? Go flying back. Your head go, go flying back. He would not stay at Mach 5. No. The person is not as aerodynamic as the plane. And if you just jumped out of the cockpit, that wind would hit you hard and slow you down. What happens here is as this little rock goes farther and farther into the atmosphere, it hits more and more air. The air slows it down. The air pushes back on it more and more and more. And so, in fact, it does not speed up. That's the mistake I had with your, with your comment, DJ. Once it hits the air, hitting the air slows the meteorite 
and heats it up. You don't have to write this. You can just watch this. This is, uh, so I'm trying to make these things look as complete as possible. In case you go and look at the notes on the drive, you do not have to copy, comma, but you should understand. Hitting the air slows the meteorite and heats it, it burns up. And by burning up, you get a glow, what we call a shooting star. That's what we see. So hitting the air slows you down. It doesn't speed you up. That's the only thing I had an issue with what you said. It slows it down. Okay. So if anybody wants to go back to this, you can. I'll, I'll put this at the notes for today. So let's go back over here. That was a good example. Anybody have one more example? I gave you a list of things to go right as terminal velocities. What was the terminal velocity of a baseball? You guys looked it up in that homework or that uh, lab assignment on Tuesday. What was the terminal velocity of a baseball? Baseball terminal velocity is around. Anybody remember? 95 miles an hour. <clears throat> Good guess, but according to the site we looked at, it was about, you wrote this in your chart, 74 miles per hour. You remember that number? That was in that hyperphysics link I gave you. They had five objects there. They had hail, two types of hail, a raindrop, a baseball, and I don't remember. It was one other thing. The baseball is about 74 miles per hour. Can a baseball be thrown faster than 74 miles per hour? Does anyone know? Can anyone, can anyone in this room, I don't know if any of you are or were baseball players, can anyone in this room throw a baseball faster than 74 miles per hour? No. Dave, um, no. could you do it? Yeah, I did it one time, but how, never again. How far did you throw? How fast did you throw? Like 60. No, faster than 74 is what I'm asking. Oh, no, no. It's never. actually, for those of you who don't know anything about baseball, high school pitchers regularly throw faster than 74. You know, if you're on a baseball team, high school pitcher, regular person on the street hanging out doesn't quite throw that fast unless they're very athletic. But a major league pitcher can throw a ball 100 miles per hour. So baseball, the terminal velocity is 74. Pitchers can throw over 100 miles per hour, the top, top speed pitchers. Anybody know from the major leagues what's the fastest pitch ever thrown? I don't know either, but I know it's well over 100. I've heard 103. I've heard 106. There was a guy in 105. 105. There was a guy. Was that guy in the National? Yeah, 105. Okay. So here's the thing. A shooting star pushing somebody falling or a baseball pitcher. Can an object exceed its terminal velocity? Yes or no? Yes or no? Yes. Of course. The objects can. The answer is can. The baseball pitcher is the simplest example. I'll give you another simple example. Have you guys ever do uh, dived into a pool? Anybody ever dive into like a deep pool, like one of the ones the swim team trains at? It's like 12 feet deep, right? When you hit the water, your body, the human body, has a terminal velocity in water. It's water resistance instead of air resistance. When you hit the water, Juan, what happens to your speed? Does it stay fast all the way to the bottom of the pool, or do you slow down and not hit the bottom? You slow down and not hit the bottom. Ah, when you hit the water, you were going faster than your terminal velocity in water. And what happened to you? That's actually the next question. If forced to go faster than its terminal velocity, the object would do what? What happens to you if you're going faster than your terminal velocity? 
The same thing happens when the meteor hits the uh, atmosphere. The same thing happens when you dive into a pool. The same thing happened to Felix Baumgartner when he jumped from that balloon. Once you exceed your terminal velocity, what starts to happen to you straight away? Hmm. Tough one, huh? Let me show you a little clip and hopefully you'll see it. This was one of the questions actually you got asked on the, is it Monday or Tuesday? I'm going to show you just a piece of this video that I had you guys watch. Here we go. Okay, you remember this video? Here he was. Let's get him right when he jumps, right here. Now, he is 24 miles up, more or less air. Come on, everybody. This is a straightforward question. More yes. or less air? Yes, less air. When there's less air, is there more or less air resistance? Nice. Yeah, less air, less air, less air resistance. And so when there's less air resistance, he can fall faster. Watch him. <laughs> He disappears quickly. Now they jump up. I'm going to jump up to where they start showing his speed. Let's see here. Okay, look at this. See how fast he's going? 575 miles per hour. 600 miles per hour. This is kind of like a meteor coming into Earth. There's almost no air up here, so he just keeps speeding up, speeding up, speeding up. But what happens to his speed once he starts hitting the air? Do you remember from the video? What happens to his speed once he starts hitting the air? Biggest? He slows down. Yeah, watch his speed. So he's going up, he's at 700, 750. 800, and you can hear the wind. He's starting to hit thicker and thicker air. He gets up to about 850. And then watch what happens. Uh oh. Can anybody understand him? There it goes now to 800. One minute. One minute free fall. 750, 700. Look how good he's got. 660. Oh, yeah. 600. Like a As he's hitting the air, what's happening to his speed? What? Decrease. Decreasing. <laughs> That's because once he hits the air, he is now above his terminal velocity. What automatically happens? So Diego had the question, do you explode? Does something bad happen? No. If you're forced to go faster than your terminal velocity, like Felix Baumgarten, what ends up happening? What happens to your speed? Michaela? It slows down. That's it. If forced to go faster than its terminal velocity, the object would immediately start slowing down. Until it hits what? Does it slow down to zero? Ian, what does it slow down to? Uh, the, uh, the exact terminal velocity. Yeah. Start slowing down to the terminal velocity. That's it. That's it. That's all that happens. Now, uh, who, who brought up the meteor? Okay. Uh, DJ, you were talking about it. Ian, you brought up the meteor. If you're forced to go much, much, much faster than the terminal velocity, you might actually burn up as you slow down. So beware here. I'll put a little extra. This is almost like a bonus item. Let's put this with a little asterisk over here. Here. If starting... 
much faster than terminal velocity, comma, the object might burn up as it slows down. So Diego, that's probably what you were thinking about. You don't have to point out that he's not here, I know. Yeah. That might have been what you were thinking about when you said something explodes. If you start out much faster than your terminal velocity, which you see in some space movies, like when the rocket comes, the shuttle comes in to land. If you start out much faster than the terminal velocity, you still slow down to the terminal velocity, but you might burn up. You guys probably didn't realize when you stick your hand out of the window that your skin is actually getting warmer from the process of hitting the air. Now, cold air might also make you colder, but it's kind of like this. Everybody take their hands. We're going to do the Mr. Miyagi right now. Pick your hands up. Pushing through air is just friction. It's just rubbing. Slap your hands together, Mr. Miyagi. Rub them hard. Put some effort into it. Do you feel your hands warming up? They're not warming up. Push harder. Woo! And then Mr. Miyagi puts it on, on the injured body part and you get better. But that's just what's happening. When you rub through air, everything warms up. If you rub through air hard enough, you're going to burn up. Woo! That's a heck of a skill drill. Sometimes it goes there. All right, breathe. Submit that thing.